It's Wednesday morning. Good morning. And we are at Romans 1. Well, we're still on verse 1, actually. 1 and 2 and 3, something there. Um, so I'm going to read from verse 1. Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and who was declared to be the Son of God in power according to the Spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. That doesn't finish the sentence, but that takes us through verse 4. Now what we have here, some say it's an ancient creed. And you could, with a little tweaking, we could say this instead of, you know, the Apostles' Creed some Sunday. Uh, some, one professor that I had said he thought it was an ancient hymn that Paul is quoting or drawing from. We have no idea what the music would have sounded like, but, but I think he was going by the fact that there's so many parallel structures in the piece I just read and so many uh, phrases that sit in parallel with each other. So it, it's like a song because it, it says something and then it says something about that and then it says something about that and it just keeps building. And if you, if you take a piece of paper and write this out kind of in like a poetic style, you can see that structure very clearly. Anytime in the Bible when you're looking at words that repeat like uh, where it says, well, where it says, which he promised through his prophets concerning his son, who was descended from David blah, blah, according to the flesh, and who was declared to be the Son of God according to the Spirit. You see those parallel prepositional phrases and things that um, to give us those clues. So here, uh, Paul has said that he's called to be an apostle, and we talked about that. He's set apart for the gospel of God. Um, those who are part of the church are those who are called out and set apart. That's ancient language, and Paul uses it, but that's, that's a very early way to understand who we are. We are set apart. People who are holy are set apart from the crowd. Uh, <coughs> sometimes we think of ourselves as set apart and kind of, well, we must be better than them because we're set apart. Um, that really isn't it. Uh, Paul is, though, set apart for the gospel. He's, he's set apart his special task. Uh, God is going to use him in a special way, and that is to proclaim the gospel uh, of the Son and, you know, who was blah, 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 blah. So we'll, we'll get into all of that in the next few days. But uh, here we see Paul says he, he understands himself to be set apart for this particular task. So the question that I would ask us, I'd have us reflect on, is, you know, what task are we set apart for? And we all are not set apart to preach the gospel. I mean, we're all supposed to uh, share the gospel and tell the gospel to people, um, but you're not all supposed to be preachers. I've noticed over the years that... Um, Someone gets real serious about their faith. Someone gets real serious about, about following Jesus and reading the Bible, and all of a sudden they're talking about how they want to go to seminary. It's almost as though we haven't set up anything that people can identify in the church apart from this path to uh, ordained ministry. Now, some of those people are called and, and do quite well as, as ministers, and that's not a problem, but some people that I've known really needed to just sort of chill out and find another way to express their faith in the church without being in the ordained ministry. And um, sometimes we've had to say that very gently to people, and sometimes they take it well, sometimes they don't. But um, that's one thing I've noticed. So, so let, But let's think about you, and let's think about our lives together. What are we set apart for? Uh, Leslie Newbigin, who was a British uh, missionary to India and then came back to England and wrote books, and Leslie Newbigin said um, that uh, we're all called to, to 
proclaim the gospel, to share the gospel in whatever ways that we can. And many of us do that in our lives as um, bankers and merchants and truck drivers and you know lawyers and you know all these jobs that we have. Whatever our calling is, our job is. That's where God wants us to work, proclaiming the gospel. And that's very, very uh, reformed. Calvin uh, taught basically that same thing. So think about how you can share the gospel in the work that you do. Can you share the gospel in that work? And what would be the effective ways to share it? Um, Because some people think sharing it means sort of beating other people and shoving it down their throat, and that is not very effective. So what effective ways can you think of to share the gospel today? with somebody. Give somebody a word of hope. Okay, we'll see you tomorrow and we'll keep going through this complicated sentence.